Welcome to the On the Road edition of WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly sharing the biggest information and network security news each week. I'm your host, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting September 17th, 2012. Due to my pack schedule, I'm going to have to make this a very short episode and will only quickly highlight uh, three different stories or topics. If you're watching this on YouTube, I want to make sure you check out WatchGuard Security Center where you can find a post with a reference section that has a lot more detail about these stories. Jumping right in, by far the biggest story this week was news of a brand new Internet Explorer Zero Day vulnerability. A security researcher who was poking around a malware server found a new IE Zero Day vulnerability which he then disclosed to the world. Microsoft quickly confirmed the exploit he found was a new flaw by releasing a security advisory confirming there was a new use after free vulnerability in Internet Explorer 7, 8, and 9. The flaw doesn't affect Internet Explorer 10, but very few users actually can use Internet Explorer 10 yet. Uh, later in the week, Microsoft released a fix it, a small workaround that uh, mitigates this flaw quite a bit. So if you are a Microsoft Internet Explorer user, you definitely want to install this fix it. Uh, Microsoft also promises to release a true patch for this vulnerability on Friday of this week. So by the time you're watching this video, Microsoft may have their patch up already. Finally, if you're a WatchGuard customer, our IPS system will catch some variants of this vulnerability, including the Metasploit variant that's also spreading as well. So to summarize, attackers are exploiting this very serious Internet Explorer vulnerability. If you use the Internet Explorer browser, definitely apply the fix it, and also check Microsoft's security advisory for other workarounds as well. The second story affects Apple users. Over the week, Apple released a, a bunch of Apple-related security updates. Uh, they released an update for OS X Mountain Lion, Lion, and Snow Leopard, an update for Safari, and an update for, for iOS devices uh, by releasing iOS 6. Uh, for instance, the iOS update fixes over 197 security vulnerabilities, a ton of flaws in the popular mobile operating system. So if you have an iOS device, definitely move up to iOS 6. Uh, the OS 10 uh, update fixes uh, 30 some odd vulnerabilities and the Safari uh, update fixes 60 some vulnerabilities. So in short, if you use any of these products, you'll want to update. Uh, the vulnerabilities the products fix are pretty diverse but many of them will allow a remote attacker to execute code if they can entice you to a malicious web page or into uh, interacting with a malicious file, like an image file or a movie. So if you're an Apple user, definitely update. Hopefully you're using Apple's automatic software updater, and it will automatically download and inform you of these updates. Finally, let's end the week with a couple stories about bank-related attacks. Earlier in the week, a group calling themselves Az Adid al Qassam, uh, some sort of hacking group, uh, actually dosed or attacked the Bank of America and the New York Stock Exchange, and they were successful in temporarily downing Bank of America's website. According to their, their Pastebin post, they say they attacked uh, this banking site due to the anti Islam video that everyone's talking about on the internet right now. They say they'll continue to attack American bank sites until this video is somehow brought down. Later in the week, they also went after Chase's website, and I believe they were able to take that down as well. In another banking story, this week the FBI warned banks that attackers are targeting their employees. Uh, basically, the FBI warning mentioned that uh, attackers are creating spear phishing campaigns, Trojan botnet campaigns, to actually try to get malware on, on banking employees' computers. And the goal is, once they have this malware on an employee's computer, they can start getting all the uh, information and logins necessary to do fi financial transactions. And in the past, they've been able to transfer a ton of money, anywhere from 400000 to $900,000, using these type of stolen credentials. 
So if you're on a, a banking employee, you should be on high alert right now. And make sure to avoid suspicious emails. Be careful what sites you go to. And really, the computer you, you check your email on and you browse on should not be the same computers you use to do financial transactions. Well, that's it for this week's abbreviated On the Road Edition episode. Again, I want to remind you, if you're watching this on YouTube, check out WatchGuardSecuritySenter.com, where I'm going to post references with many more details about these stories that I've quickly highlighted, as well as I'll post links to a couple other stories I just didn't have time to get to since I'm catching a flight in a couple hours. As usual, thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you. Thank you.